Whenever you get a new computer, whether you built it yourself or you bought it off the shelf, there are several things that you should really do or should have done as soon as you get home to and go set it up. So that's what this video is gonna be about. So the next time you go to get a computer, you'll know what to do. Or if you've been using your computer for a while, you may have realized you never really did some of these things. So you can do them now. The first thing to do is make sure all the software is up to date. So basically Windows update, but also things like graphics card drivers, which you probably have to get from like Nvidia or AMD's website. And this is obviously important because when you buy a computer off the shelf, you don't know how long it's been sitting there. It might have a couple months old versions of Windows. You don't wanna go around browsing and then be a security risk. So this is simple enough. You literally just go into the Windows update settings and then run the update and install it, wait for it to go, and you're good to go. Again, if you're doing graphics card updates, you probably have to look to see what the manufacturer is, either Nvidia or AMD. I believe they all have automatic tools for getting the latest updates for those. Now, the next thing you'll definitely wanna do is uninstall all that bloatware. Even if you build your own computer and install a fresh copy of Windows, it'll still probably include crap like Candy Crush, which is in the start menu, it's so annoying. But this will likely be even worse in terms of bloatware if you buy a computer off the shelf, because a lot of times those manufacturers get paid by certain software companies to include their software pre-installed on the computer, and a lot of times it's unnecessary. So this is really easy, whether you're on Windows or Mac, you just go into the list of apps, uninstall anything you know you're not gonna use, you know it's pre-installed, it's just junk, and then you won't have to deal with it again. All right, now the third thing you should definitely do is install a good anti antivirus, specifically one that has some kind of real-time network protection and web protection. The one that comes built in with Windows or whatever other OS isn't necessarily bad for super basic antivirus stuff, but what you also need to worry about these days are exploit attacks on your web browser you're using or other software, which can potentially infect you without you even doing anything. That being said, this is obviously the best time for me to talk about today's sponsor, Bitdefender, and specifically their product, Bitdefender Total Security. More than just antivirus, it's a complete complete security suite covering all major platforms, namely Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android. It's highly rated by independent labs and won product of the year from AV Comparatives in 2019 and won best protection and best performance from AV Test. It has a wide array of features such as network threat prevention, which can stop attacks before they begin by blocking malicious attempts on system vulnerabilities and brute force attacks. Plus, it has anti-phishing web protection, which will warn you when you come across fraudulent web pages. Again, in my opinion, this type of real-time protection is key because it can protect you against attacks that are not your fault and happen in the background, or so-called drive-by attacks. Bitdefender Total Security also has multi-layer ransomware protection, including ransomware remediation, which basically instantly backs up any files it detects is trying to be encrypted by ransomware and restores it after that malware is blocked. Plus, there's plenty of other features, such as webcam protection and microphone usage notifications from untrusted apps, as well as performance profiles that detect when you're playing a game, watching a movie, doing work, and automatically adjusts background tasks and pop-ups so you aren't disturbed. Be sure to check out the link in the description where you can get a special extended 120-day free trial for new users, which covers up to five of your devices. That's way longer than the usual just 30-day trial, which is awesome. With all that being said though, we can now continue on. All right, now the next thing you should definitely do is go through the privacy settings on your computer and I'll go through a few specific examples in Windows that you can take a look at but really you want to go through all the other ones too. So for example in Windows if you go to settings, privacy, and general two things I would definitely disable right away are let apps use advertising ID and also show me suggested contents in the settings app. The first one basically disables a unique tracker ID that Windows has for you and then allows advertisers to basically target you for ads. This isn't gonna disable ads completely or anything, and it'll probably make less specific ads for you, but it's definitely more privacy conscious if you don't wanna be advertised to specifically. And the other one is basically just for advertisements, so I'd keep that disabled. The other setting is in settings, personalization and start, and definitely disable where it says show suggestions occasionally in start. Again, these are just advertisements for more bloatware. You don't need to see that in your start menu, so definitely disable that. Next are a couple settings I would actually recommend enabling. So if you go into Windows Explorer and just go to the View tab, you'll see two options for file name extensions and hidden items. I would enable both of these. So the file extension one is important because this will actually let you see the full file name of a file so you know exactly what it is. So instead of just looking at 
picture on your desktop, you'll see picture.png or JPEG, which first of all is just nice to know exactly what kind of file it is, but also in terms of security, it's very important because if you accidentally download a file, it might trick you into making you think that it's a type of file such as a text file or a music file, but then it might actually have an exe file extension that you can't see if you don't have this enabled. So you think you're opening a picture or a document, but really you're running a executable that could be a virus. So this way, you'll know exactly what type of file something is every single time. You just have to look at the final file extension. The other one for hidden items is also kind of just good to know in case you're looking for a file. It could be a hidden file. They're usually kind of rare, but also again, in terms of security, a lot of times, if a virus installs itself, it'll be a hidden file. So if you're reading instructions on how to remove a virus or something, then you might not be able to find it unless you have this enabled. All right, now the next thing you should do is check the power plan for your computer. You can find this by just searching in the start menu for power and sleep options, and then go to where it says additional power settings. Here you'll see probably a few of them. It'll probably by default be on balanced but you'll also see options for high performance and low power mode. If this computer is gonna be either a desktop or a laptop that's gonna remain plugged in all the time, I would definitely recommend just putting it on high performance. There's not really a need to have any kind of power saving if it's gonna be plugged in all the time. And that way you'll know you'll always get the best performance out of it. Now, if it's a laptop that you are gonna be using mobily, then balanced is fine. And then of course, if you're gonna be using it for long extended periods of time, you might choose to put on power saver mode for that amount of time. But it is really important to know which power mode you're on. I've told this story in the past, but one time I was editing a video and I had my laptop plugged in and I realized it was running really slow. It was editing the videos horribly. And I was kind of confused because this was a brand new high power laptop and it wasn't able to do even super basic functions. And then I realized that it was on power saver mode, even though it was plugged in. So I was getting a fraction of the performance. And once I put it on high performance mode, it was working perfectly. So if your computer is running way slower than you think it should, check to see if it's on a power saver plan. All right, moving on, this one is definitely essential every time you get a new computer. And again, if you haven't done this already on your existing computer, do it now. And that is set up a recurring backup plan. Windows makes this super easy. I talked about this in previous videos. You literally just have to plug in any kind of external drive. It's super cheap, hard drive, whatever. And then it'll automatically by default back up the most common like documents, videos, folders, all that stuff. But also you can of course add folders to be backed up as well. But what's also really cool is in Windows 10, I believe by default, just by having backup enabled, it'll also have this feature called file history, which makes it so it'll actually keep versions of the file. So say you're working on a Word document and you screw it up in some way that really can't go backwards, but you saved it already, then you can actually access previous versions of that file from previous backups. So you can actually change how frequently this occurs. So this could be a real, real lifesaver if you screw up some file and you need to access a previous version of it, Windows will automatically do that. You just go to the properties of the file and then file history, and then you can see all the previous ones. All right, now the final thing you should do along with another tip in a second that I'm gonna talk about is to save the serial number of your computer or really any other accessories that you're getting for. So for this, basically just take a picture of the serial number. It might be beneath the battery, for example, and that way you'll have easy access to it. So for example, if the thing needs to be sent in for warranty repair, usually they'll ask for that serial number. Then you'll have easy access to it. You don't have to go look it up, take it apart. You'll already have a picture of it. Or another example is if it gets stolen, then you might wanna be able to give the police the serial number. So if it gets recovered, they'll be able to identify it. But here's a tip that I've been using for years, and that is create an actual photo album on your phone, whether you're using Google Photos or iCloud, create an album that is specifically for serial numbers. And that way, every time you get a new product, you just take a picture of it. And what you can also do is create a text note on that file. So this is available in both iCloud Photos and Google Photos. You make a note, so then you can actually literally just search for the product name whenever you need the serial number and it should come right up. This is especially useful for maybe bigger items like your TV. If you need to access the serial number, this can save you from having to climb behind the TV and look at the serial number or something like that. And if you from now on just do it on basically any new products you buy, it'll make it really easy to kind of have a database of all your serial numbers. So after having done all those things and getting that out of the way, now you should be able to get to the fun part of your new computer, which is customizing it and installing all your favorite software. But I don't think I 
need to go over that. You should probably be able to handle that yourself. So again, I want to give a thanks to Bitdefender for sponsoring this video and be sure to check out the link in the description to check out Bitdefender Total Security. And also again, you can get that free 120 day trial way longer than the usual 30 day trial. So be sure to click that link in the description. Now, if you guys want to keep watching, the next video I'd recommend is where I went over some hidden features in the new Xbox Series X. So if you're curious about that, you can just click on that video right there. So thanks so much for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video.